Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we are going to build a movie app. So we will learn everything about React, Redux Toolkit for State Management, along with Axios, React Router Dome and SAS for CSS. So if you don't know about Redux, then I have a video on it. You can click on the card above and jump to it directly. Let me show you the demo that we are going to build in this video. So this is the application that we are going to build. And if you see that we have a header with a logo and on the right hand side, we have the user icon. After that, we have the movie section and we fetch all the movies from the API. And then we store these movies in our Redux store. And if I scroll down, then you will see that we have an another section, which is the shows, which will display all the shows. So if I hover on any of the movie card, then you will see that we have a very smooth uh, transition with the CSS. And if I click on any of the movie, then we go to the movie details page where we see the ratings of the movie votes, the runtime and the year and some details about the movie. So if I click on the logo, then we go back to the home page. And let me show you the Redux store that we have for this uh, project. So if I go to the inspect element and in the Redux tab, then you will see that these are the actions that are being dispatched. So first we have the add movies, which actually fetch all the movies and add it to our store. Then we have the add shows, which fetches all the shows and then we add it to our Redux store. And then when we click on any of the uh, movie card, then we have a select movie or the shows, which we go to the detail page of that particular movie or the shows. If I click on the state tab, then you will see that we have three states, uh, movies, shows and selected movies or the shows. And apart from that, we also have a route, which is the page not found. So if we go to some random route, then we will go to the page not found page and then we can click on the logo and we can go back to our home page. So this is what we are going to build in this video. So this is going to be a very interesting project and we are going to learn a lot of stuffs on React, Redux Toolkit, SAS, React Router Dome and Axios. So so if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys. So if you are a student or a working professional who is looking for a great career in software development, then you have to think about the aspects like what's trending in the industry or the kind of questions being asked in the interviews. What's the thought process behind the architecture of a great applications like Google, Amazon, Zomato and Ola or how to improve your code chef ranking. So an academy is providing a platform where you can have access to the weekly shows which you can watch live and the host of these shows are working with some of the top companies like Google, Amazon to name a few. They are seven star coders on CodeChef and are industry experts with their years of experience. They will walk you through their own industry experience and interact with a lot of guests like HR and industry leaders of the top companies where they will ask questions raised by you. In the live episodes, you get an opportunity to ask tech HRs about the top 20 interview questions and the industry leaders directly about their recruitment process in startups and MNCs what's the eligibility and how to apply and how they build such great products. Not limited to this, you can even get your resume and your college or a personal projects improved by getting them reviewed by the experts, software development engineers. Not only this, you can participate in the mock interviews and learn courses on programming languages, cloud computing, blockchain and crypto tech aspects of digital marketing data analytics. One of the leading digital marketing experts will be coming live on a weekly basis and teaching digital marketing using practical projects and tools. Get to understand the technical aspects in a fun and easy way. You will be taught all about digital marketing from zero, so you don't have to worry about the basics. We all know about the ads which we run over multiple apps like YouTube, Flipkart, Amazon, Instagram, but how these companies manage to target the correct audience and convert these leads into sales. And you can get your daily dose of learning and many such shows at one price, rupees triple nine per year. And if you use my code, the page zero one, then you will get a 10% discount and get the subscription at eight double nine per year only. You will find all the links related to the Earn Academy platform in the description below, along with the discount code that you can use for subscription. All right, guys, so I have already bootstrapped my React application using NPX Create React app and the name of my application. 
and I will just give you a quick walkthrough what I have in my project at the moment. So this is the sample project which we get when we bootstrap the React application and I am running the application using the NPM start on localhost 3000. So if I go and show you then this is where my application is running. And first thing what we are going to do is we are going to delete all the unwanted files that we don't want for this project. So I'm going to select the setup test and then the report web. We don't want the logo. We don't want the index CSS. We don't want the app test as well. We don't want the robot.txt manifest and these logo images. So I'm just going to delete them and I will click on the delete. So that is going to delete everything and it is going to give me an error. So let's solve the error. So we don't have this logo so I'm going to remove the logo all right and inside this I am just going to write the uh, app so that we can see that something is there in our app component and then we will go to the index.html and from the index.html I'm going to remove the manifest file because we don't have the manifest file now and then I'm getting an error because of the report web vital.js so I'm just going to zoom a little bit so that you can see all right, so this is giving me an error and it's let's go to the index.js and inside the index.js I'm just going to remove this. All right, and now if I save it, then I'm still getting an error and that is because I have a index.css. So let me remove the index.css. All right, and the last thing is we just need to remove this. So I'm just going to select this and I'm going to remove this and I will save it. So now everything I have removed which I don't want for this project and if I go to the package JSON, then I just want to show you that what all dependencies I have at the moment. So I already have a Redux toolkit. I'm going to show you uh, how you need to install the Redux toolkit in your project and after that I have the node sys because we are going to use a SAS for the CSS and I'm not going to use any framework for the CSS. I'm going to write all the CSS from the scratch. So because I have created a previous video, the React Redux video where I have used a semantic UI and I have found that a lot of people find difficulty while using the classes of the semantic UI. So I decided that I'm going to write all the CSS for this project. And then we have the React Redux DOM library for the routing and we have the Redux. So this is all the packages I have already installed and apart from that uh, we also need the Axios. So I'm just going to install the Axios. So I will go to this node and you will see that I'm already installing the Axios. All right. So now my Axios is installed and we can see the Axios as well. So before start writing any of the code I want to show you some slides where we understand how we are going to structure the project and what all the packages we have installed and how to install those packages. So the first thing we have done is we have bootstrap the react app. So you can use this command to bootstrap your react app. And after that we have installed the Redux, React Redux and the Redux toolkit. So you can use this command to install your uh, Redux and Redux dependencies. And then we have installed the Axios because we are going to make some API calls and we are going to use the Axios package for the API calls. And then we have installed the React Router DOM so that we can uh, do the routing of our components. And last we have installed the Node SAS which will be uh, helpful for writing the SAS CSS. All right, and the next thing we will see that how we are going to structure our application. So this is how our movie app is going to look. We are going to have the app component and inside the app component we are going to have the header component and the footer component. And in between the header and the footer we are going to introduce our routing logic where we are going to have the home component and then we are going to have the movie details and we are going to have a 404 which is the page not found. So this is how we are going to do a high level skeleton of our application and then inside the home component we are going to have some more uh, components. So on the top we are going to have the app component then we are going to have a home component which will be a route and then inside the home component we are going to have the movie listing component which is going to list all the movies and the shows and then inside the movie listing we are going to create a movie card component which will be the individual uh, movie card or the show card. So I hope you got a bit of idea how we are going to design this application. Now let's go to the Visual Studio code and let's create the folder structure and the files that we are required for this project. All right. So first thing we will do is we are going to convert this app CSS into a SAS file because we are going to use the SAS. So I'm just going to remove all the CSS. OK, and then I'm going to rename this and I'm going to rename this as uh, app.sas. All right, and then in the source folder, we are going to create some more folders. 
So the first folder which I want to create is the common folder which is going to have all the common files for me and then I'm going to create a components folder. So let me add the components. All right. And the third folder we need to create is the features folder which will contain all our Redux files. So right now we are not going to write anything in this features folder, but we are just going to create the folder. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to have the features. So this features folder will contain all my Redux code and then I'm going to have the images folder because I'm going to use some images. So let me have the images folder. All right, now I will go to the common folders and I'm going to create some common colors for my application. So I'm going to create a file and I'm going to name it as colors.scss. All right, and I'm going to add some primary colors. So for me, my application will have a primary color and that color will be hash 0F171E. All right, then I'm going to have my secondary color. So let me have the secondary color all right and the second color which i'm going to use is 1A242F all right and for the fonts also i'm going to give a font primary and font secondary so i'm going to give a font primary and this font primary color will be white so i'm going to give fff all right and there will be a font secondary so let's add a font secondary as well so that is going to be 7 9 b 8 f 3 all right so we have created some common colors for our application and i'm just going to close this because we don't want this now and inside the components i'm going to start creating my components so i'm going to create a folder and i'm going to give it as a footer all right and inside this footer i'm going to create a file uh, which will be the footer.js all right and then i'm going to create an another file which will be for the css so I'm going to create a footer dos sas. All right, so we have the footer. Now the next folder we are going to have is the header. So let me add the header and inside the header, I'm going to have the header.js. So let me have the header.js and I'm going to create one more file which will be for the CSS. So I'm going to write the header.css. All right, so we have the header, we have the footer. Then we are going to have the home folder. So let me make in another folder which will be home and inside the home, I'm going to create my home.js and then I'm going to have my home.scss. All right, we have the home, then we are going to have the movie listing. So let's go back to component, create a folder which will be a movie listing. All right. And inside the movie listing, we are going to have the movie listing.js and we are going to have the SAS file. So I'm going to have the movie listing.scss file. All right. Then we are going to have the movie details. So let's go back here and write the movie details. All right. And inside the movie detail, let's create two more files. So I'm going to write the movie detail.js and I'm going to write the movie SAS. So I'm going to have the movie detail.scss SAS file. All right. So in this way you can create all the folders. So I'm going to just quickly create all the folders which we need. All right, so I have created all the folders and the files which I need for the components. All right, so now let's start writing the functional component for each of the uh, components we have created. So for that, I am using an extension, uh, which is the, let me show you. So this is the React code snippet, and this is going to help me to quickly build the React components. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will just start with the movie details, and I'm just going to write RSC. And this is going to give me a functional component. So I have written the RSC, I'm get the functional component. I'm just going to write here the movie detail. All right, so this is done for the movie card. I'm again going to write an RSC and I'm going to add a movie card here. So let me add a movie card. All right, so I have done that as well. Now let's go to the page not found and I'm going to write RSC again. And then I'm going to write here the page not found. So let me add the page not found. 
All right, we have done the page not found as well. Let me close all the sets files for the movie listing. I'm going to use again RSC and I'm going to add here the movie listing. So I'm just going to do a copy paste. All right, for the home component. So let's write the RSC and I'm going to write a home here. All right, so we have the home as well. Now for the header, let's add the snippet. All right, so I'm going to copy and I'm going to add the header here. All right, and last for the footer. So let's write RSC again and let's create the footer component as well. All right, so we have created all the components and we have also written some of the basic code in the component. Now, the next thing I want to show you is we are going to use the OMDB API. So for that, we are going to need a key in order to call the APIs. So let me show you how you can generate the key. So this is the OMDB API website and you have to get a key. So if you click on the API key, then you just need to enter your email and you need to submit. So you are going to get a free API key for using the OMDB APIs and you will get this API key in your email. All right. Let me show you how you can use the OMDB API key. So if I click on the usage, then you will see that how we can do we can use in this way. And there are parameters which you can use in order to uh, make changes in your APIs or the type of data you want. All right. So I already have the API key. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code. Okay. And what I will do is I'm inside the common. I'm going to create a folder for the APIs which will help me to call the API and we are going to use the Axios package for calling the API. So I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to add the APIs here and inside this I'm going to create two files. So the first one will be the movie API dot JS. All right. And the second file would be the movie API key dot JS. All right. So for the movie API key, I already have the key. So I am just going to copy paste my key so you can generate your own key. So I am just exporting this API key so that I can use it. All right. And for the movie API JS, I'm just going to import my Axios package, which we have already installed. So I'm going to have my Axios package from the Axios. All right. And then I'm just going to do an export default Axios dot create. All right. And then inside the Excel code create, I'm just going to give my base URL. All right. So I'm just going to do a copy paste of the base URL, which we saw from the OMDB website. So this is the base URL. All right. So we are done with our common stuff, which we need for this project. And let's close this. Let's go to our app.js. All right. Inside app.js, first we need to change this to the SAS because we are using the SAS for this project. All right. And now let's write the app component first. So inside the app component, what we are going to do is first let's import the stuff which we need. So we are going to build a routing. So for that, what we need is first I'm going to import react from react. All right. The next we need to import is the browser router. So let me add the browser router as Router, I will need the route and I will also need the switch. So let me add the switch. All right, so I have added that and now let's create the route. So I'm going to have a multi line JSX. So I'm just going to remove this. All right, and here I'm going to write a div with a class name of app. All right, and inside that I'm going to add the router. All right. And inside the router, I'm going to have the header first. All right. And after the header, we are going to have the route. So our first route will be the path and I'm going to add the path as slash. And for the slash, I want to load the component, which is the home component. So let me add the home here. Uh, home here. All right. And then I'm going to have an another route and the path for that route will be is the movie detail. So whenever we go to the path as movie slash uh, ID, so our ID will be I am DB ID. All right. So whenever we go to this route, what we need, we need to have the movie details. So I'm going to write a movie detail component here. 
all right all right and our third route will be the uh, page not found so for that i'm going to add the route and i will just simply add the component and our component name is page not found all right so we have all the routes and the last is we need to add the footer so let me add the footer all right so we have added all this and let's go and we are see that we get an error because these are not defined so let's add them so what i will do i will go here and then I'm going to start importing my home from this is going to be slash components inside the components. I'm going to have the home and inside the home. I'm going to have the home. And the last one is the movie details. So I'm going to do an import movie detail from slash components slash movie detail slash movie detail all right so we have done everything and now let's go and see how the uh, page looks like so what i'm going to do i'm going to open the page here all right and i will just do a refresh so when i do a refresh you can see that we have the header we have the home page and footer and this is not exactly what we want is so what we will do is we are going to add a switch here all right and we are going to put all these routes in our switch so if you want to understand more about the switch and how we do the routing then i have a complete video on the react router dome and you can click on the card above or i can add the link in the description below all right so now you can see that we have the home we have the header and we have the footer and what i'm going to do i'm just going to give an exact keyword here so that it's going to match the exact path and now if we want to test it then what i will do i'm going to add a movie slash one and this should go to the movie details so we can see the movie details here all right and if there is a route uh, which is not defined and it's an other than something like that then it should give us the page not found so that means our routing logic is working fine. Now let's start working on the header first and we are going to style the header as well. So what I will do is I am going to open the header and I'm going to do a split screen. All right, so that we can have the header CSS as well. So I'm going to write the header CSS. All right, I'm going to close this. So let's start with the header JSX. So I'm going to add the multi-line JSX. Okay, then I'm going to create a div with the class name of header and inside that I'm going to have the logo. So for that I'm going to give a div with the class name and this will be a logo and I'm going to name it as a movie app. All right. So after that I'm going to add a div. So that div will be a div with the class name and the class name will be the user image. All right, and inside that I'm going to have the image with a source and I'm going to have an alt tag. So let me add the alt tag and the alt tag will be the user. All right, so we have done it and we don't have the user image at the moment. But before that, adding the user image, let's add one more thing. I'm going to import the link and from the React Router DOM. So let me add the React Router DOM. And I'm using this link so that I can have a logo. Uh, which should redirect me on the home page. So let me adjust the screen a little bit. All right. So what I will do, I'm going to add a link here and I'm going to add the two and this two will be equals to the slash. So it should go to the home page whenever I click on the logo. So I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to add it. here. All right. And let me add the images here. Uh, so I will add the images in my images folder. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to paste it. So I have two images so that we can use those images. So to import the images, you just need to write the import user from slash slash and I have the images and inside the images I have the user. All right. And I'm just going to add here png all right i will save it and as soon as i save it you see that we get the image as well now this doesn't look nice so we have to add some of the css here so for adding the css first let's uh, link the css file so i'm going to import all right 
and I'm going to import a header dot sass. All right, and let's start writing the CSS. So what we need is first I want to import all the colors which I have. So for that, what I will do, I'm going to write an import. So this will be dot dot slash dot dot slash. It will go to the common and the CSS of the colors. All right, so now we have all the colors. Next, I'm going to write a CSS for the header. So for the header, what I need is I need a background color and my background color should be a secondary color, which we already have. So I'm going to give a secondary color. All right. And after that, I'm going to give a height of 72 pixel. I'm going to give a padding of zero pixel, 40 pixel. I'm going to give a display flex. So if you don't know about the flex properties, then I have a tutorial on the flex properties. I'm going to add the link in the description. All right, then I need to align my items in the center. So for that, I'm going to write the center and I want my logo and the user icon should be at both the ends. So I'm going to do a justify content and I'm going to add a space between. All right, the next thing we need is for the logo. So for the logo, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a color to the logo and this color will be the font primary. So I'm going to add the font primary. So this should be a dollar. So let me change this to dollar. All right. So we have the font primary and then I'm going to give a font size and this font size will be 20 pixel. And then I'm going to give a font weight and the font weight will be 600. So we have the CSS for the logo as well. And then I'm going to add a CSS to the user image. All right. And I also want to add the same CSS to the user image and the image inside it. All right. So I'm going to give a width of 38 pixel and I'm going to give a height of 38 pixel. All right. So now we have the uh, movie app logo and the icon. The next thing I want to do is I want I don't want this font uh, to be on my application. I want a different font. So I already have a Google font link so you can go to the Google fonts and you can get whatever font you want. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my index.html. All right. And inside my index.html below here, I'm going to add the font which I'm going to use. So I'm just going to do a copy paste of my fonts which I need. All right, so we have the fonts here and I have also added the font awesome so that I can use the icons uh, later on for the movie details page. So these links CDN links you can find it on the Google. That's nothing special here. So this is what I have added and now what I will do. I will go to my app dot CSS and inside that app dot CSS file. Uh, I'm going to import the colors and I'm going to give some of the basic styling which I need for throughout the application. So first I'm going to import the says so uh, the colors so I will go to the source I'm going to go to the comments and then I have the colors all right then I'm going to add a universal selector where I'm going to give as margin zero adding zero box sizing border box all right and I'm going to give the font family which we just have added the fonts so for that I'm using the open sense and a fallback I'm going to give as sans serif. All right, so you can see that now our font is a bit changed and then I'm going to add a anchor tag for the anchor tag. I'm going to just give the text decoration as none. All right, for the background to the body. So I'm going to give a background to the body and this background uh, will be my primary color. So I'm going to have the primary color all right and i'm going to give one more class to my app js so after the header i'm going to add a div with a class name of container all right and this will be ending it here okay and for this container i'm just going to give a basic styling of my uh, a space on both the sides so for that i'm going to add the margin so I'm going to have the margin as zero pixel and 40 pixel. All right. So now we have the header part done and the next part we need to do is about the footer. So let's go to the footer. So if I click on the 
movie app, then we should be able to see the home. So that means uh, the link is working properly. Now let's go to the footer part. So I'm going to open the footer and I'm going to open the footer SAS as well. All right. So for the footer, I'm going to change this to a multi-line JSX. All right. I'm going to give a div with a class name of footer. All right. Then I'm going to have a div. And here I'm just going to have a movie app name of my application. And then I'm going to have a div. And I'm going to have some text here. So I'm just going to do a copy paste of the text. So I'm going to add it here. All right. And let's go to the CSS first and then add the CSS. So I just need to import the colors. So I'm going to copy this from here and I'm going to add it here. All right. And then for the footer, I'm going to give a background. And this background will be the secondary color. All right, I'm going to give a height same as my header 72 pixel. Uh, I'm going to use the display flex. All right, I'm going to have the justify content as center. I'm going to have the align items as center and I'm going to give a color of the font primary so that we can have the white color and I'm going to give the flex direction as column because I don't want them to be uh, in a row so I want them to be in a column all right and I can see that when I save it I cannot see anything here because we haven't added the SAS file here so I'm going to add the SAS file here so I'm going to add the footer.scss all right so now we have the header and we have the footer the next thing we will do is we are going to do the home so what I will do for the home is I'm just going to close this. I'm going to close this and I'm also going to close the header as well and the index as well. And what we will do is we are going to go to the home component first. So inside the home component. So I'm going to change this to a multi line of JSX. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to give a div with a class name and I'm going to add a banner image here. So we can add a banner image here, whichever image we want. But right now I don't have any image. So I'm just going to keep this uh, div as an empty. And then I'm going to add the movie listing here. So we are going to have the movie listing component. All right. And then I just need to wrap this in a div or in a fragment. So but I'm going to add it a div. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to add a div here. All right. So this is what only we need for the home component. I need to import the movie listing. So let me import the movie listing from uh, dot dot slash. I'm going to go to the movie listing and I'm going to have the movie listing. All right. So but what we want is we first need to fetch the data and then we need to store the data in our uh, Redux store. So what we are going to do is we are going to make an API call in our home component. So for making the API call in our home component, I will make use of a use effect hook. So if you don't know about the use effect hook, I have a complete series on the react hooks. I'm going to add the link in the description. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the use effect. All right. And this is auto imported and inside this use effect, I'm going to create a function for the fetch movies. So I'm going to write a constant. I'm going to have a fetch movies and this is going to equals to the arrow function. All right. And this is going to be an async await. So we are going to add an async keyword here because it's going to return a promise. And then I'm going to write a constant response. So when I make an API call, I should be able to get a response back. And I'm going to add an await keyword because we are using an async await. And then I'm going to import the movie API first because we are going to make an API call and we have already created some a uh, default export from this movie API, which is going to give us the base URL. All right. So I'm going to import the base URL first. So this will going to give me a movie API from the uh, API's movie API. So now I can make use of that movie API. So I will use the movie API dot get and inside the get I have to create the API endpoint. So this endpoint you will be able to see on the OMDB website. So what I will do is I'm going to do a back tick and then I'm going to add the API key. So let's import the API key as well. So I'm going to import the API key. All right. So we have the API key 
and then I'm going to give here the API key. So this is equals to API key and here the value will be equals to so I'm going to add a dollar and this will be equals to the API key API key. All right. So and we also need to add a search term that when you make the API calls what movies you want to get as a result. So for that I'm going to add an search term as S. This is a search term and I'm going to give a hard coded search term for now because we don't have a search functionality at the moment. I will go here and I'm going to create a constant movie text. All right. And we are going to make search for the Harry. So I need all the movies which contains Harry as a keyword inside it. All right. So I'm going to add here as movie text. All right. And I will search only for the movies first. So for that I need to give a type. So I'm going to do end and I'm going to add a type and the type will be movie. All right. And you will get all this information that what will be your text and what will be the key for the movies. You will get everything on the OMDB website. So let me show you once. So this is our OMDB website and you will see that we have different parameters here. So I'm adding a type with the movie. So I want only all the list of the movies. And for the search, I'm adding S and I'm giving a valid option that I need all the movies with the Harry. All right, so we have the movie and the next thing we will do is we are going to catch the errors. So I'm going to write a catch here and inside the catch, I'm going to have the error. All right, and here I'm just going to do a console log of the error. All right, so this is going to give me an error. All right. And then we can also log the response. So what is the response? So if I go to the console log and I'm going to log the response and just I'm going to give it here the response from API. So now what we will do is now we have the fetch movies function and now we need to call this function so we can call this function inside our uh, use effect itself. So I'm going to write a fetch movies function. And I need to call once. So I'm going to add an empty dependency. All right. So now if I go to the inspect element and if I go to the console, all right, I will clear the console and I'm going to refresh the page. So you will see that when I refresh the page, I get a response from the API. All right. And if I expand this, I'm going to get the data and this data for the search term, we have all the movies which contains Harry. And if I go to the network tab, then we actually made an API call to the OMDB. So right now, if we go and see in our Redux tab, then we will not see that there is any uh, store we have because we haven't configured the Redux in our project yet. So let's go and let's add the Redux in our project. And then we are going to dispatch the response which we get from the API into our Redux store. So what I will do is I'm going to add the Redux in my project. So let's go to the features and inside the features I'm going to create a file which will be our store.js. So I'm going to add the store.js and I'm going to create one more folder which will be the feature for our movies. So I'm going to create a movies and let's go to the store and add the information to the store first. So I can first import the configure store. We need to make the configuration of the store. So this is a bit of different the way we used to do with our uh, simple Redux uh, without using the toolkit and toolkit actually gives us some additional stuffs which uh, makes it more easy to work with Redux. So first I'm going to import the configure uh, store. All right which is coming from the Redux toolkit and then I'm going to simply export the constant store and the store will be equals to the configure store and this is going to have an object and I'm going to add the reducer here. All right. So we are going to create the reducers and when we export those reducers, we are going to import the reducer here and we are going to add the reducer here. Now what we will do is now we have created the store. We just need to provide our store to our component. So let's go to the index.js. All right. And inside the index.js, what I will do, I'm going to import the provider first. So I will go here. I'm going to import the provider. All right. So we have the provider and this should be from the React Redux. 
So let me add the React Redux. Okay. And then we also have the store which we have imported from here. So let's go here and I'm going to import the store. All right. I have the store and that store will be coming from the features slash store. All right. We have the store and now let's provide the store here. So I'm going to add the provider. All right. And there will be a store prop to it and the store prop will contain the store and inside the provider we just need to give the app and this part is very similar how we used to do in our Redux project. All right. So we have provided the store. Now let's go to the movie folder. So which we have created in our features. So I'm going to go to this movies and inside this movies I'm going to create a slice. So before I create a slice I want to give you some overview on the Redux toolkit. So let's go to the official website of the Redux toolkit. All right. So this is the official documentation of the Redux toolkit and how you can start using Redux toolkit in the project. So you can go and read the documentation but I'm just going to focus on some of the topics here. So this is how you can actually install the Redux toolkit in the application which we saw in the start of this application. All right. And then how you're going to create a Redux store. So this is the same way we did it right now how we created the store. We just did a config store and then we did a configure store with a reducer. All right. Then how you can provide the store. You can just do this way. You can provide the Redux store into our application which is our app component. All right. And then we need to create a state slice. So this is what we are going to create now. So how we can create these slice. So when you want to create a slice slide for us, it's a movie slice. So we are going to have the movie slice. Then we are going to import the create slice from the toolkit. We are going to set an initial state. All right. And then after the initial state, we are going to create the reducers. So a good part of the Redux toolkit is you don't need to create separate folders or the separate files for the actions for the constants and then for reducers. You can combine everything in a single slice and this is how uh, it's easy and it makes very comfortable while using the Redux because you can see everything in a single file itself. So we are not going to do a copy paste of this. We are going to create it from the scratch. So if you want to read more about the Redux toolkit, then you can use this documentation. I'm going to add the link in the description. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code. All right. So I'm going to go to the movies folder and then I'm going to create a file. And for us, it will be a movie slice.js. All right, we are first going to create a slice. So let me add a slice here. All right, this will be coming from the Redux toolkit. And then we need to set an initial state. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a constant with a initial state. And this initial state will be equals to the movies. I'm going to give an empty array. For now, we don't have any other state. And then what I will do is I'm going to do a constant movie slice and this is be create slice. All right. And then I'm going to create a object inside it and then we need to give the name of the slice. So for my case, the name is the movies. All right. Uh, I made a mistake movies. All right. What will be my initial state? So I'm going to give my initial state. And then I need to give my reducer. So I'm going to give a reducer here. All right. And there's one more parameter which is called the extra reducer. So if I add it, then you will see that we have the extra reducers. But for our project, we don't need the extra reducers. So I'm just going to give you a bit overview of what is the extra reducers is. So let's go to the Redux documentation again. All right. So this is the documentation which I want to show for the extra reducers. So here you will see that there is a counter slice and the name of our slice is the counter and we have the initial state. We have the reducer as well and inside the reducers we are going to create the actions which are we will create in our application as well. But apart from three there is a fourth one which is the extra reducer. So let's go down. Uh, we know the name, we know the reducer and then we have the extra reducers. So this extra reducers is used when you have a common method which you want to invoke but you have a different types of action. So let me go down and here you will see that we have created an action uh, 
increment by and the decrement by all right so now we have these two actions and we based on the increment by we need to do something and based on the decrement we need to do something so what we will do instead of creating two separate actions inside the reducers what we can do is we can actually add the case and then based on the action type we can change our state so for that this extra reducer is useful and but for our project we are not using any extra reducers so i just wanted to give you a bit of idea what this extra reducer is so let's get back to our project all right and for our case we don't have the extra reducers so i'm just going to remove this all right and then i'm going to write an action uh, inside the reducers so for me the action is the add movies and this add movie uh, action will take the initial state and then it's going to take the payload so i'm going to destructure the payload all right and this will be an arrow function all right and whenever i get the movies from the payload i just need to update my state of the movies so for that what i will do i'm going to do and state dot movies and this will be equals to the payload all right so here there is a difference between the redux and the redux toolkit way so in the redux toolkit it uses a internal library called ma I M M E, whatever you want to pronounce for the mutability. So what you do that you just take the state and you just update the property you want to update. So for us in the state, we just need to update the property of movies. But in the old Redux way, what we used to do is we used to do the dot 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 state and then we need to add the new state. So this is how we are we used to do. So we are going to use to do that dot 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 and we used to take the state and then we used to add the payload so whatever the initial state we have we used to take that a copy of it and then we used to add a new state to it but this we don't need to do we don't need to take care of the stuff in the redux toolkit as it uses ma internally it automatically creates a copy of the object before we make a change so this is a bit of difference uh, in the redux toolkit next thing we will do is we are going to export this add movie action creator so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export a constant and I'm going to export the add movies. This will be equals to the movie slice dot actions. All right. So we have the action which we can import it in our home component. All right. And the next thing we need to do is we can also do the export default of the movie slice dot reducer. All right, so we have the export default of the movie slice reducer as well. So what we can do is we can go to our store. Okay, and inside the store, we can actually import the reducer. So I'm going to do an import movies reducer from dot slash movies slash movie slice. And then I can just add this reducer to this. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to add the reducer here because I have only one reducer. So this is how we can actually add the reducer. Now, one more thing I want to do is if I want to fetch a value, if I want to get a value from the uh, store, how I can do that. So for that, I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to write an export constant get all movies. All right. And this is going to give me a state. All right. And what I want is I want the state dot movies, the name of our slice which is the movies and the property which we want to export that is the movies so i'm going to add the movies here so now we have added everything in the slice which we wanted at the moment and now let's go to the home all right i am in my home component and whenever i get the values from the api i want to dispatch an action so that after doing the dispatch this will go to the reducer and the reducer will update the state so I'm going to go here and I'm going to write a constant. I'm going to add a dispatch and this is going to be equals to the use dispatch. All right. So now we have the dispatch and what I will do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add it here and I'm going to add the dispatch and we need to dispatch an action and our action is the add movies. So I'm going to write the add movies. All right. So it's auto imported. And when I do the add movies, what I need to pass, I need to pass the response dot data because data is the key which contains all the results. And I'm going to save it. All right. 
So I'm getting an error that react hook use dispatch cannot be called inside a callback, which is because I made a mistake instead of adding it here. So I don't want these to be added here. So I'm going to cut this. All right, and I need to add outside my uh, use effect. All right, so now I have saved it and now let's see that whether our movies is getting into the store or not. So what I will do is I will go to I will first refresh my page and when I refresh my page, I see that we make an API call. OK, I will go to the console. Nothing is showing here. Then we go to the Redux. And when we go to the Redux, we see that we have an add movies, which is the action creator we dispatch with the response we get from the API. So if I click on it, I will be able to see the movies. So we can see that we dispatch the action creator, which is the add movies and it's get added to our store. So if I click on the state, then you will see that we get the search results, which is this and we get the total results and we get the response. So we need to make a bit of change here uh, because since our movies is not an array, so we need to make it an object. So let me go back to our code. All right, and we will go to our slice and instead of this movies and make this as the object. All right, and now if I refresh it, then we will be see that we get the movies. All right, and this movies and if I go to the state, we see that it's an object inside the object. We have a search and this. All right, now we have this and the next thing we will do is how we can fetch all the movies so that we can display it on our application. So for that, let's go to the home and inside the home. We see that we have a movie listing where we are going to list all the movies. So let's go to the movie listing. So I'm going to go to the movie listing. And inside the movie listing, if I want all the movies, then what I can do, I can make use of a use selector. So what I will do is I will go here and I'm going to write a constant movies. All right. And this is going to give me a use selector. So I'm going to make use of a use selector and I'm going to call a function get all movies. All right, so we have the get all movies which is exported from our slice. So this is and I'm going to save it and then let's do a console here. All right, so I'm going to do a console and I'm going to add a movies here. All right, and now let me refresh it. So if I refresh it and if we go to the console, then we see that we get an undefined. So we made somewhere a mistake. So if we go to our get all movies, so let me copy this, go to the slice. And if I come here, then I see that I have a state name of the reducer and then the name of the property or the state, which is the movies. And if we go to the store, then we see that we have made a mistake here. So this should be an object. All right. And inside the object, I'm going to name it as movies and this movies will be equals to the movie reducer. So I'm going to do a cut and I'm going to add it here. All right. Now if I save it, then let's go and refresh it. And if I refresh it, then you will see that on the movie listing, we actually get our data. And now we can use this data to display it on our screen. So what we will do is we are going to display all the movies on our movie listing component. So what we will do, let's go to our movie listing component. We have all the movies here and then I'm just going to create a variable. So that will be a render movies. And this is going to equals to the empty. All right. And then I'm going to have the render movies equals to movies. And we are going to add a condition that movies dot response. So if the response is equals to equals to true. So we already have this value here. So if you go to the inspect element, if you go to the Redux, then inside the Redux, you will see that we have a response here. So if this response value is true, we need to loop all the movies and we need to display all the movies. So what I will do is if this response is true, then in that case, I need to return a JSX. But if this response is false, then I need to display the error. So if it's false, then I just need to display an error. So for that, I will do a div with a class name and I'm going to give a class name of movies error. All right, and then inside that I'm going to have an H3. So let me add an H3 tag here and I'm going to close this H3 tag. All right, and inside this H3, I'm going to have the movies dot error. So if there is a case of the error, then I'm going to have a 
one more property as an error. So I'm going to just display the error, whatever it is. All right. But for this case, what I'm going to do is a movies dot search. So we have the array of the movies in this search, and then we are going to add a map here. All right. And this map is going to give us a movie slash. We are going to take the index. This is going to be an arrow function. And then we are going to return this value to a movie card. All right, so we are going to have a movie card. We are going to pass the key to the movie card as the index. And then we are going to have the data which will be equals to the movie. So I'm going to add a movie here. All right, I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to save it. So this is what we have done is we have created a variable uh, with the render movies. Then we have checked that if the movie's response is true, then we are going to loop through all the movies and add it to the movie card. But if it's false, then we are just going to display the error message. All right. And then what we will do is we will go to our movie listing and I'm going to do a multi line JSX and I'm going to create a div with a class name of movie wrapper. All right, and then I'm going to create a div with a class name of movie list. All right, and then inside this movie list, I'm going to create an h2 tag which will say as movies. And then I'm just going to create a div with a class name of movie container. All right, and inside that, I'm going to do the render movies, whatever the render movies I have. Okay, so I'm getting an error. So let's see what the error is. And it says that movie card is not defined. So let's import the movie card. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to import movie card. All right. And this will be coming from the movies. Oh, sorry. This will be coming from the movie card slash movie card. All right, we can see that when we render this movie, then we see that we have the cards here. These movie cards are based on the number of results we have in our search array. All right, so we have the movies and now let's go and add some of the CSS to the movie listing. So I'm going to go to the movie listing and then uh, first we are going to add the uh, color SAS. So I have added the color SAS and then I'm going to do the movie list. And for the movie list, I'm just going to give a margin of 20 pixel and zero pixel. Then for the H2 tag inside it. So for that, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have a color and I'm going to give a font secondary secondary. All right, then I'm going to give a margin bottom of 10 pixel. And I'm going to give a font weight of 400. All right. And then uh, we just need to add this movie listing SAS file to the movie listing. So I will go here and then I'm going to add it here import. And this import will be dot slash movie listing dot SCSS. And if I refresh it, I cannot see anything here. So what have we done? So what I need to do is I needed to add a semicolon here. So now if we see that we can see the movies uh, CSS. All right. And then last we need to add the container. So before adding a CSS to the movie container, let's go and uh, add the values to the movie card. So I will go to the movie card and inside the movie cards, we are going to receive a props. So we have passed a prop here. If you go here, then we will see that we have passed a prop of data so that we can get the data here and I'm going to destructure the prop. So I'm going to get the data which will be equals to the props. And then what we will do is in the return, I'm going to do a multi line JSX and I'm going to write a div with a class name of card item. All right, then inside that I'm going to add a div with a class name of card inner. All right, then I'm going to add a div with a class name of card top. Okay, and inside the top, I'm going to add an image source. And this image source will be coming from the data dot poster. So if I go here and if I do the inspect element, let's go to the Redux tab. 
if I go here, search, and then we see that here we have the values and here we have a poster. So I'm adding the poster to the image. So then the alt tag will be the data dot title. So I'm going to add the title. So we have all the properties on our object of the data. So the image is added. All right. And then we need to add the card bottom as well. So I will do a div with a class name and this class name will be equals to the card bottom. All right. And then inside that I'm going to add a div with a class name of card info. All right, then I'm going to add an H4 tag and this H4 tag will contain the data dot title and I'm going to have a paragraph tag and this paragraph tag will have the information of the year release year. So data dot year. All right. And now let's see here. So if I refresh my page, then we see that we have a broken image. So we might have done something wrong here and that is because the poster is capital. So if I save it, then we will see that we see the movies, we see the Harry Potter, Deadly Hallows and all those stuff. Now, the only thing we need to do is we need to do a little bit of styling. So let's go to the movie listing first and we are going to add a grid here. All right. So we're going to use a display grid. So I'm going to here and I'm going to go to a movie container. This movie container, I'm going to add a display grid. And then I'm going to add the grid template columns. We're going to repeat it and I'm going to do an autofill the space which is available and then I'm going to add a min max of 220 pixel and I'm going to add one FR. All right. So this is a simple grid stuff I'm doing and I need to add a space between them. So I'm going to give a grid gap. So let me add a grid gap. Uh, yeah, grid gap. And I'm going to give a grid gap of 15 pixel. All right. So I haven't done much here. I have just simply used the CSS. And if you want to understand more about the CSS grid, I have a complete course on it. You can click on the card above or you can find the link in the description. All right. So we have this uh, listing as well. We have the movie card. The only thing we need to do is we need to style our movie card. So we are going to take a pause here once we style our movie card and we are going to continue the same application in the next video because it's going to be a too long video in, in a single stretch and I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information in the same video. So I'm going to go here and I will see that we have the images, but we don't see that uh, the images and everything. The CSS is not so good. So what we will do is we are going to add some more CSS to the movie card. So let's go to the movie card. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to the movie card. All right. So first I'm going to add the colors. So let me add the color and then first we are going to do the styling of the item card. I'm going to give a background and the background will be the secondary color. So let me add the secondary color. All right. And then I'm going to give a cursor pointer. All right, then I'm going to have the top card top. And for the card top, we need to have a height. So let me add a height of 300 pixel. Inside this, we have the image. And for the image, I'm going to give a width of 100% so that it can occupy the complete uh, height and width of its parent. And I'm going to give a height of 100%. All right, and then I have a card info. So let me add the card info. And this card info belongs to the title and the year. So for the title and the year, what I will do is I'm going to give a color of font primary. All right, and then uh, let's give a H4. So to the card info, I have an H4 tag inside that. And for that, I'm going to give a font size of 22 pixel then I'm going to do a font weight of 400 all right and then I'm going to do a margin so I'm going to give a margin bottom of 10 pixel all right so we have added the CSS we just need to link the file so let's go here and I'm going to do an import uh, of slash movie card so dot scss all right I will just save it 
Okay, and now if I show you, then so if I just do a zoom out, then yeah, we, we don't see a still there is a space. We need a little bit of space here. So for this, what we can do, we can actually add some of padding here. So let's go back here. And this is for the card bottom. So I'm going to copy this card bottom. Let's go here and let's add the padding. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a padding of 20 pixel. All right, so now we can see that we get a proper movies and we get everything properly. We have the footer and we have the movie. But we see that there is a problem here and let's see what we actually give the CSS to it. So if we go here, if we go to the header, we actually gave a space around, but we need a space between. So let's add a space between. So let's go to the header says and instead of the space around, let's change it to space between and I will save it. So I think we will take a pause here and we are going to continue this application in our next video where what we are going to do in the next video is we are going to have the shows as well. And whenever we click on any of the movie or the show, we should go to the details page. So that part is still pending and we will also see that right now what we have created is a synchronous action creator. We haven't used any middleware. So we will also you see that how we can introduce the middleware with the help of a Redux toolkit. So that's all I have in this video. I hope you like the video. A thumbs up is appreciated. You can also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter for latest updates. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. I'm going to add the GitHub link in the description so that you can download the code and play around it. And thank you. Thanks for watching.